Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're taking a look at the Mastergrade Gundam NT1 Alex version 2.0. And I just want to start out the review by letting you guys know something very clearly that from a subjective, completely personal point of view, I don't like how this kit looks. But I'm just letting you guys know that and I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to give you guys my full review of this kit completely objectively because it is a very good master grade kit. It's just that I personally don't like the way that Bandai chose to lay out the design and the proportions of this kit. Now, as a couple people pointed out in the unboxing video, it seems that for all the 2.0 Universal Century kits, Bandai is going for this anime accurate look to them. Although I'm not sure how much I completely agree with that. The 2.0 Gundam and the 2.0 Zakus, I don't know, those do kind of have their own kind of stylistic design to me. Those don't look like they're meant to be super anime accurate like this. This looks like a master grade version of the ver anime Robot Damashi, in my personal opinion. It's very much along that similar kind of design. But whatever you think about the design, love it or hate it, again, it's a good solid kit with a lot of really cool stuff in the box. All the Chobam armor for this is really cool. That's probably my favorite part about this kit. If it wasn't for that, I don't think I would really be into this kit at all. But I do really like that aspect of this kit. And so, but there are still other things that I think aside from just the aesthetic look of this, there's certain parts about the design that just couldn't, like while building it, I couldn't help but think that this seemed like I was building a kit not from 2019, but like from 2015 or something like that. It just didn't seem like a really super modern master grade. So although it is most definitely an improvement over the original, there's no question about that. It just didn't quite seem as modern as some of the other new, like brand new Master Grades that we've had out recently. Even not quite as nice as like the Master Grade Gym Sniper 2 and it's a different variants that we've seen out recently. And those would be kind of comparable as like a recent Master Grade from the Universal Century. So anyway, let's get into it and we'll go through all the details about the kit. So before we get into all the accessories and everything, a couple things. First of all, of course, a big thank you to us at Gundam Store for making this review possible. Check out this kit and everything else there on their site, listed down below in the video description, and use that coupon code there, ZakuRelease10, to save 10%. The other thing that I want to talk about is the color separation on this. Now, as for stickers, it only has foil stickers there for the head camera and for the eyes, which I have used in this case, but you do have a clear green part behind there if you would just prefer the clear part. But as for color correcting stickers, it doesn't have anything, and the color separation on this kit is really good. That is one thing that I will say is really nice about the construction. Otherwise, the construction of the rest of the kit is pretty just basic. I mean, it does everything that you're going to want out of a just solid standard master grid doesn't really have any special bells and whistles in terms of the uh, articulation but everything's all there i guess where it should be but the color separation is really nice these little bits of yellow that you have for these little bits this part here for the red on the knee is actually a red little piece these yellow bits for the vents and the gray inside the vents there and I like the gray bit of frame that's kind of like showing through between this like crack in the armor there on the inside and outside of the legs, things like that is all really good. But we do have a bunch more marking stickers for this. So I have put a few of them on, but there's a whole lot more and a whole lot of these little ones that you can put around on the mobile suit as well as on the exterior Chobam armor as well. Then other bits we have included is of course an action base adapter. We have the optional broken V fin as it appeared in the anime. We have a couple of pilot figures here, 100 scale Alfred and Bernard looking really cool, uh, looking like he's running to stop the fight there and then looking like he's uh, posing in the photograph from I think it was the opening of the show for recreating scenes from the anime. Then we have some different uh, finger parts so it is going to be swappable fingers for this guy. We've got closed fists as well as open hands and regular holes holding hands, and then trigger finger hands. We have a set of those each for the left and the right hand. Then we've got a set of standard beam saber effect parts here for the beam saber stored up over his shoulder on his backpack. We've got his very cool, unique looking beam rifle. I like the look of this. It has that more kind of utilitarian, like real militaristic style look to it compared to something like what the ARC-782 uses. So it's pretty cool. It doesn't mount to anywhere on the kit when not in use. People have noted that it is kind of large, and I think it is kind of larger than it really should be, but it does look good. I mean, if you like that or not, it is maybe a little bit larger than it technically should be in anime, but it does look good. We do have a seam line on that, most notably here among like under the underside of that. Otherwise, for the rest of the bit, it's pretty well hidden as a panel line for like the back half. It's only gonna be under the front half here that you're really gonna have to worry too much about that seam line. Then we do also have his bazooka. It's pretty standard. The front handle moves like that. This is using some parts from the Gundam 2.0 master grade kit uh, bazooka like the front and back bits and like the ammo cartridge on that so some nice detail for that but it is also using some new parts there as well you have a little clear green little part there and for the camera 
on this, so it all looks pretty nice. This one can be mounted onto the back skirt. Just like with the 2.0 Gundam, you're gonna fold out this little tab and that plugs on here to his back skirt like that. And then we also have, of course, the shield, which has a handle here. It's gonna plug onto the side of the arm and then the handle is movable for that. And you can also open this up the blue part of that lifts up and out of the way like so. For when this is attached onto the arm and you want to fire as Gatling guns, you can open up the shield and fire through the shield like that. So it's a pretty cool, interesting gimmick that they've adapted into this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Gatling guns now. So on the forearm, this blue part lifts up and the white part also pushes down a little bit for that to get open really nice and far. So you can see like the opening here between the white and the blue part should be parallel. If you don't have the white part open, then it's gonna be like that, which is technically not correct. But if you wanted to have it technically correct, that sh oh, white part should also open up like that apparently. But anyway, the other cool part about the Gatling guns here in the arm is that these are in that plated chrome silver, which the only other parts are here on the backpack, the thruster belts there with the yellow parts set inside there. So those are pretty cool if you like chrome plated parts. You have a few of them in this kit, so it's nice that those are there. And then of course we have all the Chobam armor, which I have currently in here. We'll put that on in a moment, but let's first just focus on the Gundam itself. So one of the things that I don't like about the retro look of this kit is just the size and shape of of the head. It definitely looks like very similar to the Gundam Verka, I feel like in a way. But anyway, the head will go up to there, which is okay, nothing really too great, and then down to there, and then of course you can just rotate that every which way. At the shoulder joint, the shoulder will move forward just a bit like that. The shoulder armor by itself can move up a little bit up and down like that. In for the shoulder, you do have that vinyl like trash bag style covering that you're gonna thread over the shoulder joint there. But if you don't wanna use that, you can just opt not to use that. It's barely visible in the finished design. It's pretty much well hidden by that shoulder armor, but it's very similar. Of course, well, exactly the same to what you would have had with the Master Grade Psycho Zaku or full armor Gundam from the Thunderbolt Master Grade kits. But that's just there in the shoulders. The shoulder joint will lift up and you'll be able to extend the arm up to about there, which is pretty good, much more than a 90 degree bend, so that's nice. Then we have rotation at two points, one at the top of the arm and one at the elbow joint. So you can rotate it here at below the elbow or here at the top of the arm. You might wanna just stick to you know one or the other, I guess, depending on which kind of pose you wanna go for. Then we have double joint there in the elbow to give you a pretty nice full bend there. And then the wrist is just on a ball joint. The wrist also does have a hinge in there so you can get some nice movement there. The thumb is just on a ball joint. Now the one thing about the ball joint of the wrist is that it's very, very tight. So be really careful when you're rotating that, I found. It's super, super tight. You just wanna gonna rotate that really carefully as to not break anything, but I already feel like that's starting to break, so I'm not gonna touch that anymore. You're like just twisting that and you're very easily just going to twist his hand straight off. So one thing you might wanna do is just to sand down that ball joint in there for that part. I'm actually gonna take the kit apart before we move on with the actual posing or anything. I'm gonna take the, this arm apart and sand that down a little bit more because I can already feel like that's about to break if I move it anymore. Going around here to the backpack, nothing moves on this except for these thruster bells will move just a tiny bit, but nothing really too much there. The cockpit hatch does open up. You can open that up like that. We've got a seated pilot figure of Christina inside there. Alternately, this red door here on the front does also just slide open like that. So you have kind of two ways of opening up to get to that cockpit. As for the articulation in the torso, we've got a little bit of movement there backwards and then stomach crunch to the front there like that. So pretty good forward and back movement. Side to side, however, nothing really too much in the way there, but you can rotate it there like so. As for the skirt armor, these are kind of interesting the way that those are built. So those will move side to side a little bit like that. You can slide that down. That's for mounting on the armor later on. Then that will rotate up all the way up like that. So no problems with that getting in the way of anything I don't expect. The side skirt armor, that's not the first time I've had that fall off and it's going to fall off if you're moving the legs out to the side. I feel like the connection is very tight in there. It's just a small little tiny piece, but when you're moving the legs out to the side like that, yeah, there you go, it's gonna fall off again. You can get the legs to about to there before that's gonna be popping off the side skirt armor. For the back skirts, those will also move up and down. They're joined at the center, but you can move those up and down together like so. Hip joint doesn't actually have any sort of swinging hip joint or moving hip joint in that at all, so it's just stuck right there where it is, but you can Rotate the leg there at the top. Bring the leg really far forward is not gonna be an issue. And then of course you have a nice double joint here in the knee. 
So you have good separation there with that. And the knee armor itself doesn't separate us. This is one solid piece on the front, but here on the back, you have this piece here on the back, which will tuck into the inside of the leg there as you bend the knee. So that will help you get a nice full bend out of that. So that's a pretty cool bit that they worked into there. This little vent at the bottom of the lower leg does also move up and down a little bit like that in there. The ankle armor also will move forward and back just a tiny bit. The ankles themselves will move side to side pretty good there. So you should have no problems getting your nice wide stance out of this. Get the foot forward all the way up to there and then back all the way pointed down to there. As you can see, we do have some nice toe bend in here as well. So the ankle and the foot all pretty good up underneath the feet. Nice full details there as well. So it's all looking pretty good in that section. All right, so man, after going in and uh, sanding down those ball joints for the wrist, I gotta say, definitely, definitely do that. I checked both of mine, already had stress marks from just trying to move them a little bit, and those parts could very, very easily break. So definitely go in and just sand that ball joint a little bit before you put that together. Don't want to sand it too much because then your wrist is going to be just completely loose. You can always tighten it back up a little, again by adding a little bit of glue or paint or something onto the ball joint later on. So I think that's probably easier to fix than if it were to just break altogether. Then that's a little bit more difficult to fix in that case. So definitely just take that step during the building process if you end up getting this kit. Otherwise though, I mean, as you can see, the articulation overall is going to be pretty good. You can get the kit into pretty much any pose, but I am finding that side scar armor to be a little bit more of a nuisance than I expected it would be because even if you want to have the torso turn, if you want to have the torso rotated in a certain way, then it's going to be bumping into that side skirt armor and knocking it off. So I wanted to have the side skirt armor, I wanted to have the kit turned more at the waist section there, but I just couldn't because it's just popping off the side skirt armor every time. So the connection point for that side skirt armor is just a little bit too close, a little bit too tight in there, and it's just a little bit too small to really hold the side skirt armor on while trying to to do some posing on this, so I'm finding that to be a little bit of an issue. Just taking a look at the kit like this as it is, it's very easy to imagine a fate where Bandai would have just sold this to us as just the kit and maybe sold the exterior Chobam armor as like a P Bandai set or something for this. I wouldn't have been surprised at all if that would have happened. Of course, that would have been disappointing and it's much better. I mean, it's great that Bandai decided did not to do that, but I mean, really, who would have been surprised if they would have decided to release the armor as a P-Bandai set. I don't know if this was Bandai's thinking behind the reasoning for this, but I think having the armor in there is definitely gonna help sell the kit. If this is all that you were getting, then maybe not quite as exciting a new kit to get. I mean, it's a brand new Master Grade. That's always nice and exciting for people to get, but I think the armor definitely helps sell it. I think it needed just that little bit of extra excitement or extra accessories in there to, to help move this kit. So whatever the reason was, glad that Bandai ended up deciding doing it that way. So before we move on to adding on the rest of the armor, I just want to talk a little bit about the extra parts they have included with this kit. And you have a, a small handful of extra parts. Most notably though, you have all the parts here to make the RX-782's 2.0 beam rifle, except for the yellow part there for the scope. So other than that, you have all the parts here for that, which is pretty cool. Another noteworthy part that you have left over is one of the little vernier circle parts here, the white and yellow parts for that, which you have a bunch of around on the kit. Now, the cool thing about that is that if you lose any of those, you have an extra one. So that is the nice thing about having that. So keep this extra one just in case you end up losing one of yours somewhere along the way and you've got that just in case. All right, and then the last thing before we get all the armor on is to take a look at the internal structure of the armor, which is really cool just in itself. So, so this is all according to the instructions. You have to put all this stuff on first, and then you go in and put the armor on, on top of this. But this just makes for a really cool extra extra added layer to this, especially the back skirt. The back skirt's really awesome because it's kind of the most detailed part of this, how it has the extra thrusters included in there on that. And I think this is probably a good indicator of what is probably the best thing that you can do with this kit. And that would be to turn this into some, I mean, to build this, I mean, into some finished piece of being like in a hangar with like half of the armor on and half of this structure on. And that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing with mine, to be honest. But this is one aspect of the kit that you're not going to want to not show off in some way. You're gonna to wanna to have this with some of the armor off so that you're able to see some of this uh, internal structure of this on top of the main Gundam itself, just to show it off, just cause it looks so cool. All right, then at long last, here he is at his full thickness. And still, those side skirts just still look like they're missing something. It really looks like he needs a little piece of armor on the side skirts there as well. The armor in general is pretty plain. There's not a whole lot of detail on there. You have some little bits of detail. And the nice part about the armor is that you do have some little bits where 
the silver internal frame of the armor does poke through. You can see like on the front skirts, especially the front and back of the shoulder armor. And then on the backpack, back skirt as well, you have little bits poking through. That's all nice. You also do have a couple of parts of armor that do open up, which I'll show you here in a moment. But overall, just the armor is going to give it a much more unique look to it rather than just looking like just kind of your standard Gundam. And now really has a unique look to it as we've got other different like full armor Gundams like Unicorn and the Full Armor Arc 782, but those are more like armed up with weapons. This one is actually armed up with a lot of exterior armor, so it does have more of a full armor look to it, I guess. So then those opening panels are going to be here on the chest. This opens up for you to have access to the cockpit. That's really cool. Here on the front and back of the shoulders, you have these little bits that open up there for access to the verniers. Similarly, here on the backpack, you have two little bits that open up there where the verniers there on the, are on the backpack. And then down here on the lower leg, you have these two little flaps which will fold out like that, obviously for the big thruster there on the side of the leg. So it's pretty cool, all the extra flaps that you have open up like that. So you can open that up like so, and you can still fire that. So that's pretty cool there as well. And that actually allows you to see some of that internal structure of the armor in there as well. So that's pretty cool. And then the very last icing on the cake is this new bit of armor here for the head. Now this is not something that we saw in the anime. This was from the, originally from the SD kit, if I remember correctly. So once that is on, added onto there, it really has a really cool look to it. But still, man, just really wish it had some bit of armor here on the side of the leg there. It's just really missing something. But that is going to pretty much wrap it up for the review here, guys. So there's uh, one other flap that I forgot about is the flap on the side of the shoulder armor that also does open up a little bit there as well. But anyway, that is going to wrap it up for the review, guys. Uh, there's a lot of mixed bag with this kit. Like I said, the... I, Aesthetic of it may be for you or it may not depending on your personal taste that said the overall construction of it though is fine There's nothing really too great about it. There's nothing really bad about it at all It's just kind of standard middle-of-the-road master grade So it doesn't really stand out that much But that said if you are a really big fan of the Alex or just looking for something a little bit more unique Especially with all this armor on there It does give you a really kind of interesting take on your standard Gundam master grade so definitely probably the the gimmicks are the most interesting part about this kit. The gimmicks that you have with the forearm opening up, the Gatling gun pointing out of there, and the, of course the gimmick with all the armor added onto it. Those are probably the most interesting aspects of this kit, I would say. It's definitely good that this kit got a 2.0 because it surely needed one, but what do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section there. Of course, if you have any other questions, you can feel free to leave those there as well. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for that. Again, big thank you to us at Gunham Store for sponsoring the review, and I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.